And good evening, Montreal. Beryl Wiseman, editor of Suburban, back with you at the Suburban Radio Hour with my good friends and colleagues, Anthony Bonaparte, features editor, Mike Cohen, who brought you everything you need to know about entertainment and society news. And now we turn it over to Mark Lidbetter, our sports editor. And Mark, you've got a, a, a fascinating guest today who's really who's really going for, for a great achievement. That's right. Uh, I have Montreal's Alex Moore, Olympian. That has a nice ring to it. And uh, he's a freestyle wrestler who's uh, heading to the Paris Games this summer. And he trains out of the Reinitz Wrestling Center of the Westbury Y. So, uh, Alex, uh, welcome and congratulations on making the grade. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Now, now listen, uh, you've been at it a long time since, what, the age of 11, I believe. But you come by it honestly. Uh, your dad your dad uh, coaches wrestling and uh, he coached you. And I, I believe he coached you at Selwyn House, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. He coached me at Selwyn, yeah. So, uh, I mean, what, what was the attraction? What is the love you have for this sport? You know, cause it's, it's tough. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a tough sport. I think it was from a really young age being born in, into it mm-hmm. and then seeing my dad and just wanting to emulate him and, you know, every kid, you know, you just want to be like your dad. So, you know, my first tournament went, when it was, my first tournament was when I was 11 years old. But I was in the I was in the wrestling room um, long before that. Um, like I was in the baby carriage at practice. My dad would bring <laughs> me. He changed my diapers there. And it was a lifelong affair. No, it's amazing. And you also you you know you wrestled for Vanier at, and at Concordia, and you've represented the country on the international stage at the World University Games. You've medaled. Uh, you, at the Commonwealth Games in 22 uh, and uh, the 2018 World University Games with bronze. So obviously, you know, you're in it, you know, you want to do well. Uh, you didn't make uh, the uh, games in China. Did that fuel the fire to come back and work harder to make the games in Paris? Yeah, so so four years ago, it's actually it's been a really hard journey. So four years yeah. ago, right before our Olympic trials, I blew out my ACL. Yeah. Two week, yeah, two weeks before. So, um, and then everything, and then everything with COVID happened. So the games got postponed, and I got another chance for a rest loss. I won my rest loss, but then I had to go qualify the country. And right before my rest loss, I tore my labrum. So despite despite winning my rest loss with the torn labrum, I it, it wasn't enough to kind of get back out there and qualify the country. So then I had to put my dreams on hold for a few more years and then happy to have accomplished the first part of that dream. And do you pinch yourself now realizing you've made the goal of being uh, an Olympian? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I, yeah, it's it's been a weird few months, honestly. Um, you know, it was it was a very big high for, for, a few, for a few weeks and then it kind of calmed down a bit and now it's just kind of getting back to reality and I have a lot of work to do, a lot of training, hard training to do in these next few months. So, well, you're but at, yeah, I do pinch myself. Yeah, you're you're at one of the best centers, uh, and you've got some of the best coaching going on. Is it fine tuning now, or is there something specific you're working on so you can say I'm on top of my game when I'm going in into the uh, the Olympic meet? Got a lot of fine tuning, making making sure I'm peaking um in august and then staying injury free that's one of the, my big that's one that's been one of my big issues is injuries and stuff so yeah. staying healthy fine-tuning everything staying in really good shape and uh yeah just getting ready yeah. and you're going to be competing in the uh 86 kilo category yeah 86 kilos yeah so that's uh, a lot of you know that's uh, some big guys going at it out there um yeah yeah what do you feel is like your main advantage on the mat i think i have a good mix between like a a pretty big a pretty good pace that i'm able to put on my opponents and tire them out and then i mix that with like i have pretty good movement and technique so i have a good balance of the two you know some countries are very purely like physical trying Mm -hmm. to wear out the other guy and then other countries are very technical and i find that i have a pretty good blend between the two and i wish you the best of luck in paris we're going to be watching uh, right. you know, safe travels, and I know you're going to enjoy it, but make sure you take the time to drink in some of the atmosphere because that's a great experience, and I thank you for taking the time today. Yeah, of course. Thank you. No problem. My pleasure. So, Mark, when somebody becomes an Olympian, when, when he reaches that level, mm-hmm. how many people has he uh, or or she, have they, have they gone through? Like, how many have they beaten? 
Well, they have to uh, be in the top of their class. You'll have Canadian championships. Like you mentioned, uh, for the Chinese China games, he had an injury, even though he had won a wrestle-off. So he actually had that opportunity to wrestle off and earn a berth. So you have to be the Canadian champion uh, in that. Each sport has its own different qualification, you know, way to do swimming and diving. You have to meet standards in track and field. Uh, tournament or team sports, you have to qualify within, like soccer within uh, North America. You have to qualify among the top in CONCACAF. May maybe the top three teams will advance to the Olympic pool for that. So there's all different qualifying uh, ways that it goes to the Olympics. But everybody that gets there, they make sure they get their proud tattoo. They get their tattoo of their the Olympic rings because they are an Olympian for life. Okay, and uh, we still got things going down on the, uh, going around on the local level. Uh, yeah, I hope you love a star on the rise. I hope you Island. love this story. It's uh, about tennis and uh, Beaconsfield's Nayela Sehik is a bright star in Quebec's youth tennis scene. The 10-year-old Sehik is currently the number one ranked player for her birth year of 2014 in the 12U provincial rankings, so she's punching above her weight. Uh, most recently, she was a finalist in singles and doubles at the 10U championships at Santa Sport in Boucherville, and uh, she followed that up by helping Team Quebec to uh, end a decade-old drought against Team Ontario in an interprovincial tournament at Stade Igia, formerly Jiry Park, for the Expos. And over the course of three days, she played in 13 matches. And she took first place in her singles group and bronze in doubles. And, of course, the team medal for besting Team Ontario. Now, the ECS student, she trains up to 15 hours per week on and off the court at the Nuns Island Tennis Club and competes in tournaments uh, monthly. She's a multi-sport athlete, uh, but her focus is on the future in her future intended. And I love the confidence when I asked her if she plans to become a professional player. She didn't hesitate just saying, I will. So really good on her. And uh, we also have some great hockey uh, results for the St. Laurent Minor Hockey Association. Uh, two U13 squads, the A and the B levels, were regional championships in Lac St. Louis. Uh, the Spartans in the A level and the Warriors in the B level uh, they uh, had really great years. The Spartans added the region title to their EHL season championship and the EHL playoff crown. And in the region title tilt, the Spartans doubled up on the Valley Feed Bra Braves 6-3. Uh, the Warriors captured their championship banner after edgery, edging the Soulan Senators, and that capped off a season where the Warriors also won the EHL playoff championship and a pair of tournament titles. So uh, now, am I supposed to let you get away with the title of the, of, the, of the note you sent me? You couldn't just compliment this person, this player. Last name was Har. No, our Mark Lidbetter, the king of puns, had to put in a Har the effort. It's what I do. It's what you do. Well, and Tell us about it. The Dollar U16 boys uh, doubled up on the Haute Richelieu Celtics for a 4 2 win uh, on their home field of Dol Dollard Synthetic. Uh, in the Ligue de Development Provincial, and Sarta Jar paced the Dollard attack as he potted a pair of goals in the win. Dollard keeper Dylan Coup made several sharp saves and was only bested on precision shots off the boots of two Celtics players. Uh, Samuel Fanouf and Aramis Beg had the other goals for Dollard. Excellent, Mark. Thanks very much. Anthony, as always, Mike, thank you. And Montreal, thank you for listening. And we'll be back with you next week. For another Suburban Radio Hour, and for now, happy Mother's Day again, and hope to see many of you at the Israel Independence Day Rally Tuesday at 11 at Plastic Canada. Mm -hmm.